Well, hello, everybody. Hello, Chris. Glad to have you with us. And hello, everybody joining us today for our um, for our spring 2021 Ames Colloquium series. We are thrilled to have you all joining us and privileged to be able to enjoy this afternoon together. My name is Paul Reimer. I am the executive director at Ames. I'm joined here by some of my Ames colleagues and um, by all of you as well. And I just want to give everybody um, a very warm welcome. And uh, we'll go ahead and, and get started. If this is your first time with us today, um, uh, especially an especial, especially warm welcome to you. I uh, hope that you find this next hour to be informative, engaging, uh, and rewarding to you as an educator. Um, we're excited to be able to share uh, uh, these times throughout this uh, semester. We'll be having three such colloquia sessions, and we're excited to bring together some um, what we think will be very engaging, engaging talks. So uh, today, I uh, just want to sort of highlight a couple things. First, we have uh, featured presenter today is Dr. Christopher Brownell, um, Fresno Pacific University. I think many of you may know, uh, may know Chris. And um, just to give you a little bit of background about Chris, uh, uh, Dr. Brownell is Associate Professor of Math and STEM Education, Program Director of Mathematics Education at Fresno Pacific University. He is also co-author of the book, Math Recess, Playful Learning in an Age of Disruption. He is a former math and physics teacher who is now an author and speaker on the beauty of math. Uh, and his work is with both in-service and pre-service STEM teachers, focusing on providing content-rich courses that challenge paradigms and ask them to change their frame of reference. His research interests lie in how altering teachers' frameworks can improve the overall learning experience of students in the K-12 system in STEAM subjects. And um, just also a little bit of background today on uh, AIMS, if you are uh, sort of joining us for the first time, uh, you should know that AIMS is a nonprofit focused on playful, engaging, human-centered, and culturally sustaining approaches to teaching and learning mathematics and science. And our vision is for an equitable world through math and science education. We're excited to be able to host these uh, colloquium talks, to be able to provide scholarships to teacher ed students, to master's degree students. And we're also excited to get to know you better. So uh, as we get started, can I just have everyone post their, uh, post a hello in the chat. If you would just give us your name and also perhaps uh, your current teaching assignment, where you are, and what grade level you're teaching. So if you wanna just put your name in the chat, actually when you put, when you do post, it will have your name there, but if you would just say a hello and uh, where you are teaching and your current grade level, so we can just sort of get uh, introductions going here. So perfect, thank you. Welcome everybody. Great to see the introductions, super, super awesome. So um, Chris, I think I'll turn it over to you. Uh, again, thanks for being with us, Chris, and we're looking forward to your talk today. Thanks, Paul. I am on no longer on mute. Okay, good. Um, yay, for once I start a meeting without being muted. It's kind of unusual. Um, Mangela's laughing like it's like I'm telling a real joke because I've done this so many times to her and she's just okay. Um, howdy, none of you are really strangers to me, I don't think. Most of you I've seen before. Um, I see one or two names that are unfamiliar to me, but that's that's all right. Um, 
As Paul said, I, you know, you know who I am. I work at Fresno Pacific. Um, I am the associate, I'm an associate professor of math and STEAM. And um, I have been lately uh, working a fair amount with, um, a, with data science as a curricular movement. Um, and um, the people I've been working with um, uh, at, uh, at Stanford, U-Cubed, are also connected to um, the new math framework. And today I'd like to talk a little bit uh, about the new mathematics framework here in California. Um, so uh, with limited amount of time, I will probably talk more than I should. And, um, but I would like to get you some time to uh, dig into it. Those of you who are in um, my problem stats class have already done some of the some of what we what we are going to look at tonight. But you know what? You're going to bring to your uh, small group discussions a completely new and um, a, a, a different perspective. Um, for those who are not aware, um, the the state of California, like your local school area has a school board um, that's uh, sort of elective, elected and sort of semi-appointed as well, um, state school board. And um, there's a state superintendent who is definitely elected. And um, then there is a, then there's the California Department of Education, which is a professional organization hired um, out of the executive side of the government um, and funded through the, the legislative side. Just like um, at the federal level, there are uh, departments that are run by the executive, but um, funded by the legislatures. Um, the, the State Board of Education and the CDE work in conference, in concert, supposedly, um, and they create, um, they created the California Common Core State Standards that you all are familiar with um, based on the common, they are, they're not called Common Core, they're now called California Core State Standards, which are based on the Common Core State Standards, which were produced in 2009 or so. Um, every few years, the state board um, goes through and re, uh, reinvestigates the, the standards and, and creates a framework for public schools um, in, in a subject area. And the framework, um, the, the mathematics framework, there are frameworks in all of the subject areas, but the mathematics framework is the only one I care about. So that's the only one I'm going to talk about if that's all right with you guys. Um, and uh, it's, it's not terribly, um, it's generally not been a controversial um, sub topic. It, it, has a, it, it has the opportunity though to set a lot of policy um, direction and it also um, will definitely create um, uh, the frame, the framework under which school districts will be shopping for um, curriculum in the future. So after it gets adopted, um, that's when it really starts to take take hold, and um, your your curriculum will be will have to fit under this framework. And so um, because of that, um, I I'd, I'd kind of like to talk about the framework for, with you because it's open now for public comment. And I'll talk more about how you can get involved with that at the end, but you should know that from now until April 8th, you can um, get involved. You can say, yeah, this is a great idea, or whoa, you guys are crazy. And now's the time to do that. So um, let me, now, now comes the real, real effort. I'm going to try and 
switch to present mode and see if I can make this happen. And simultaneously then share my screen with Yins. See if this is working. Did somebody yell at me, hey, yeah, that's working or no? Yep. Good. Yes. Super. OK, so this is me. Um, and we'll just move on from there. Uh, so the, the just to start off, um, the, the California math framework um, has is built on a few very strong core beliefs that I think are, are evident. Um, and each one of those um, sort of, I want to put my plug in for contemporary research um, because each one of these is embedded um, with, with research that's, uh, that's alive and well today. And those of you who are working on your research projects, um, uh, you, you are contributing to these, these conversations. And so um, one, one core belief that's, that's written, that's built into the structure of the, of the math framework is this idea of the growth versus the fixed mindset. And that, the, that growth mindset, um, both in teachers and in students, is, a, is the stronger, more robust approach to teaching, meaning um, uh, approaching mathematics from the perspective that you can learn it. It will take time, but you can do it, and it will. Um, it may be an arduous process, but you can grow. Rather than the idea that some people have math skills and others don't, um, the the research clearly indicates that people, when people adopt and and turn on a growth mindset for themselves they actually do improve their ability to learn and, and learn mathematics. Um, secondly, mathematics can be taught in culturally relevant and sustaining ways, meaning um, you can teach mathematics in context um, with students who um, are, are, are at any cultural socioeconomic um, status, they can learn mathematics within that context. And that context can um, not just um, inform their learning, but also um, they, can, they can use their learning to understand their culture and, um, and also um, sustain it and make it a, a, a more and help it to continue and be robust. Um, Students are different. All students are different is a, is a third idea that's, that's uh, evident throughout uh, this framework that, that yes, there are students that may be diagnosed with specific differences um, uh, such as dyslexia, dyscalculia, uh, vision impairment, auditory processing. Um, these things are real, um, but that these things do not mean that students cannot learn, but rather instead they learn in different ways, which means and leads to the concept of multimodal learning. And um, multimodal now is also overarching, meaning you can learn um, both visually, orally, uh, auditorially, um, uh, paper and pencil, using manipulatives, using blocks and toys and tools using um, spreadsheets and, uh, and other software packages to learn mathematics. Um, and if you focus, and lastly, a big uh, uh, a core belief um, to, the, to this framework is the idea that if you center on big ideas, if you center your teaching, if you center your curricular design on big ideas, they work to add coherence um, to the, the whole 13 years of experience rather than having a collection of disjointed um, con uh, content standards. There is, a, there is a theme and a flow and a, 
and uh, connective tissue to the body that is um, mathematics that we would teach. And each of these, these five core beliefs are, are stood out to me as I, uh, as I was going through and, and reading. I haven't finished the whole thing, but I've, I've been digging through in various places. And this is, these are really important things that I see coming out that I, that are really strong. Um, I want to, I want to go back to the, the research piece. Each one of these five things are active areas in research today. Um, people are conducting high level research studies on what it means to, to approach learning with a growth mindset. What does it mean to have large coherent ideas that hold um, mathematics or any subject together? Um, what does it mean to teach in a culturally sensitive and sustaining and relevant manner. Um, these, are, these are active research fields um, and, and they inform if you, when you get to looking through the, these um, chapters, you will see that they, these inform uh, the, the authors a great deal. Um, I'd like to, uh, to point out uh, that there's this, this beautiful graphic. If, for those of you who will attend or have attended um, any of the, um, the rollout sessions on the framework, you probably have seen this graphic. Um, it's an interesting idea. Um, it's got the sort of the feel from the next generation science standards of these cross-cutting standards. Um, if you, if you look on the left side, the vertical um, axis, if you will, are the standards of mathematical practice from the common core, whether it's making sense of problems or modeling with mathematics or looking for and expressing regularity and repeated reasoning. Those are the eight standards of mathematical practice that we've all been looking at for the last you know, 10 years or so trying to organize our thinking and organize curriculum around. Uh, along the horizontal axis are, um, are these ideas of connecting tissue, um, these major, um, and <laughs> how is it? I've just lost the phrase, uh, content connections. Um, there are these four major uh, connections um, that, that they are running through um, throughout the curriculum. And that is commuting, communicating stories with data, exploring changing quantities, taking holes apart and putting uh, parts together and discovering shape and space. These are four connective um, ideas that, that run all through all 13 years or 14 years, if you count TK, um, uh, years of school, they are all being um, uh, incorporated and integrated in these big ideas um, that drive uh, investigation and drive instruction, which are the three that cut across drivers of uh, investigation. How do you make sense of the world understand it and explain it? Can you predict what will happen? And can you, and what, what impact will knowing this have on, um, on, the, on the future and on um, me as a, as a student? Um, a couple things that that you will find that you will see that's new. I, I titled this pr this presentation as "Equity, Data, and Justice for All," and um, I'm yes, I'm trying to be cute with the Pledge of Allegiance, but um, the 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 concept uh, and pervasive approach to uh, of equity in this framework is like never before. Um, this is a quote um, in uh, uh, the first chapter in the introduction. Um, 
Instruction and equity together create instructional designs that bring about equitable outcomes. Um, this state, California has placed uh, at its core in for education, equitable outcomes and um, equitable uh, and, and uh, equ not, equitable opportunity for students to, to encounter um, rich mathematics and, um, and you'll find it woven throughout every chapter in, in the framework. Um, and, but it's mostly what I wanna draw attention to is um, equitable opportunities are there for all students. It doesn't matter if you're um, a student in a low income school or a, uh, uh, incredibly wealthy district, if you are a student with um, uh, identified differences, um, or uh, if you are a student with um, loads of privilege, there um, we can we can maintain equitable op equitable opportunities for everyone, and it is incumbent on us as um, education professionals to do so. Um, one other thing that you will find um, throughout this, um, uh, throughout the document is a focus on the environmental principles and concepts. So um, the state of California um, has, uh, uh, as included in the in drivers of investigations and content connections. Um, those are the four things that I couldn't remember the name of exactly, content connections. Um, they, that the environmental principles and concepts are this, uh, um, which is another document. Um, you are, you are uh, these are contexts for which um, instruction can be embedded and instruction could be embedded um, to allow students to examine issues of both environmental and social justice. So the concept, the idea that um, mathematics has this, um, uh, has this ability to, to help students not just learn and be successful in the world, but also to um, become uh, mathematically powerful and, and read their world with mathematics. Many of you have heard me use that language before and, and Mangela used that language before about um, using mathematics to understand the world and, and therefore empowering students so that they can uh, go out and change their world. Um, the this is these are these are things that are um, embedded in the framework now. Um, so I find that kind of exciting that that the framework is not just um, uh, looking at um, how do we re reorder when when students should learn factoring of prime non-prime numbers and trinomials, etc. Chris, before you, uh, sorry to be interrupting, but before Please. you go too much further, there was a question in the chat from Daniel who says, is this unique to California or is it throughout Common Core? Ah, thanks for, for pausing me there. Um, this is the California math framework. Um, interestingly enough, uh, at this point, uh, it's strictly California. But um, the, 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 what history tells us is California is an, uh, is an oversized impactor on textbook, textbook marketing. Um, and uh, as California goes, much of the, you know, much of the rest of the US will, will end up following um, strictly because of um, our our massive market share. Um, so if 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 
textbook companies start to come along and move in the direction of selling their, their product here in California, that means they will be shifting how they, what their uh, product looks like. So um, did that answer your question, Daniel? Yeah, also my other question is, um, did Ames have any role in helping create these? Um, boy, that's a good question. Ames, did you have anything to do? Did anybody at Ames uh, get involved in the um, framework committees? I don't believe we had any direct involvement in framework committees, although I think several of our folks have been involved in the past, but I don't think we were involved in this, uh, this round. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I just have two more slides and then I want you guys to do some, some working and, and talking together. Is that okay? Um, I'm, I'm already talking too much. Um, one thing that's really new um, in this, in this program, in the framework, is the idea of data and its pervasiveness. Um, data will be something that, um, uh, that, that will flow through all 13 years, uh, TK through 12. Um, it's an expectation that students will encounter um, data concepts and data data idea, um, how to visualize, how to formulate statistical and data-oriented questions, how to collect appropriate data, how to um, co uh, clean it up and coalesce it, and so on. Um, and they give several interesting examples of uh, data um, and how it might be used. Um, and here's, here's just a couple of things. In the TK5, you know, you, what do you use data for? You use data to understand and you use data to help you generate questions. And um, you start to come to grips with what is data and where you can collect it and what might it look like. Um, in grades six through eight, um, things get a little, little, they get ramped up a little more. They focus, um, a large focus is on variability, the idea that things will vary and how much variation is um, significant and how much is important and how much, um, do, how much of it falls within a pattern, how much of it might break a pattern. Um, and, and therefore reveal that the pattern that, that you saw was not real. Um, how to sample, um, how to look at multivariable data. So linking both, not just bivariate, but multivariate um, uh, data situations. And again, thinking and thinking more deeply about probability. Uh, in grades nine to 12, um, how to interpret both categorical and quantitative, quantitative data, making inferences, justifying conclusions. So using genuine statistical tools to calculate inference um, inferences, including hypothesis testing and um, uh, you know statistical measures like applying Z scores and T tests and maybe analysis of variance and so on. And, but also how to deal with large data sets, massive data sets, something we don't normally teach, um, something that will be new to, um, uh, to a lot of us uh, in the coming days. And then, uh, but that's for all students. So those first three columns on this slide, the columns from left to right, those first three are for all students. And then, uh, in, for those students in grades 11 and 12 who want to focus on data, um, there's a much deeper focus on, um, on the computational tools for analyzing data and, and going deeper with all of that. Um, it's really important that you see though that computational tools are in both all students and the advanced students, um, which means computational tools for data are 
things like spreadsheets, SPSS, um, R, uh, Python programming, coding within um, the uh, uh, within the the world of um, um, uh, so, so writing actual writing code to analyze data sets and draw conclusions. Um, so, um, what I what I'd like to do is sort of put you, I want to put you in groups for a little bit and have you read through. In chapter five, there are these five vignettes that they provide. In chapter five of the of the. Um, uh, the framework is a, a, a chapter that's totally focused on data. And I'd like you to read through um, five vignettes. They, they go um, uh, from um, TK5 uh, TK uh, then six, uh, no TK2, three, five or something like that, six, eight, um, and uh, work your way, they work your way through their way through high school. So those of you who are in groups nine and 10, you'll be looking at um, uh, the advanced level experiences that students will have. Um, but we're not going to break you into um, grade bands. Um, so even if you're a secondary person, you're going, you may end up be looking at a TK thing, but it's good for you to see it. Um, we'll come back and talk in a little while, um, if you would uh, take the, if you would write uh, and find this Jamboard uh, HTTP, or you can just type in uh, to you, to a URL bit.ly slash equity data jam with E uppercase, D uppercase and J uppercase. Um, that'll take you to a Jamboard that you'll all use. Um, if you are in group one and two, you're going to split up uh, slides one through four. Um, if you're in group uh, three and four, you're gonna split up slides five through eight. Um, groups five and six, you're gonna take nine through 12. Seven and eight, you're gonna take 13 through what, uh, 16? 13, 14, 15, 16, yeah. And then uh, nine and 10, you'll take 17 through 20. And um, I'd like you to talk about the vignettes that you read, so write down ideas, um, question things. Uh, at this point, talk about them amongst each amongst yourselves and, and um, uh, just use this as sort of a brain dump kind of uh, opportunity. What do you think? Uh, what do you think of this sort of approach to data within the concept, within the context of um, the, uh, the math framework and for all students? Okay, I'm going to stop sharing now. Does everybody, did everybody get the, um, oh, it's in the chat. Chris, can you um, split people up into the groups? How many do we have now? 30. Uh, we'll have we'll have 10 groups at three to four each. Perfect. That's that is spot on right on. Let's send people into those groups. And um, and did you could you also um, give them chapter five? Can we give them chapter five? And then you will find uh, in chapter five uh, those vignettes. Maybe I should. Um, also go back to this share. Um, the vignettes you're, you are looking for, if you're in group one, are the vignette you're looking for starts on page, uh, line 334 of chapter five and ends on 419. It's fairly long, but it's got lots of pretty pictures. Um, and uh, three and four, 420 to 445 also has some pictures um, uh, and so on. So try and remember these things as best you can. Hope this works. If it doesn't, we'll figure something out how to get it to you. Hi, welcome back everybody. Sorry that was really brief um, and 
truncated and awkward and that's the way things are in zoom these days but um i think you the the goal was for you to get a a, a sense of what's going on you you all have access to that jamboard flip through each other's thoughts as you go back and scan through each of the vignettes um i'll make this um, PowerPoint available to um, you, if you want. Um, and uh, I want to I want to go through a couple more. Uh, I just have uh, a couple of other ideas I want to share with you, um, if you don't mind. Um, and then we'll be running out of here uh, as soon as I can. Okay, what happened here? Oh, there we go. Uh, so uh, one thing that has, that is really um, happening in this framework is the idea that uh, the secondary program has really changed. Those of you who've listened to me before talk about the secondary, the secondary math program know that there is this there was this event in the late 19th century uh, this group of people called the committee of 10 who kind of set the that created the secondary math program that we all know and recognize that has a year of algebra followed by a year of geometry followed by a year of advanced algebra all of which was designed around teaching um, uh, essentially teaching, white boys to be ready to go to Harvard and um, and not ever really in, interested in uh, anything else. I mean, that's what that curriculum was designed to do. Then we've made a few shifts and adjust, adjustments along the way um, in the secondary curriculum. But the California math framework, the new one has made several changes and among the most telling, I think you'll see, is the idea that starting with grade six, all students will take the same math classes through grade 10. So um, the idea of accelerating through middle school so you can get to AP Calculus, BC, so that you are the, you know, you have all these uh, great math courses, higher level, university level math courses under your belt before you go to university um, is not necessarily uh, supported in this framework. It's not supported in the literature. The research indicates that 70% um, of students who take AP calculus end up not moving forward when they get to university. Um, many of them go backwards and have to retake pre-calculus or sometimes even college algebra. Um, they, but uh, very few, 25 to 30 percent of the students who take calculus in the AP program actually test out of the first semesters of calculus and successfully uh, go into the second semesters of calculus. Very few do. Um, most end up going uh, backwards. And so um, there's little evidence that that, that, that process works um, for anyone. And so there's a big shift in um, uh, the way math is envisioned through the secondary program. Um, all students taking the same math courses through grade 10. And then in grades 11 and 12, there's a diversity of offerings. All of it focused on several essential concepts. These are the 11 essential concepts of secondary of high school mathematics. Um, the top three, the big three at, at the top are, are, they look very familiar. That's essentially what most of high school mathematics does now. It's the next eight that are, that have been sort of added on, uh, tacked on, except for the geometric piece down at the bottom the argumentation, reasoning, and proof. Um, but the idea of continuing with measurement, con uh, employing transformations, applying uh, uh, geometry through modeling, and then the whole collection of 
uh, statistics and probability, um, you'll notice that eight out of 11 focused uh, uh, essential focus area, essential areas of focus are not algebraic, but are instead something else, which is um, a bit of a shift. Um, this is a vision that they have put forward in the math framework for what high school mathematics might look like. Um, uh, mathematics investigating and connecting courses one and two in year one and two, which is essentially ninth and 10th grade, and then years three and four, um, uh, a diversity of offerings. Yes, algebra two is there. Um, yes, pre-calculus is there. Calc and trig are still there. There's an integrated math three, but you might take a stats course or a full-fledged data science or modeling with functions. These are all um, options um, for the future. Um, and uh, I want to, uh, I'm over time. And so I want you to know, uh, some of you I saw in your, um, in your, in the breakout rooms, you went and you found the framework. Um, you should all go to that site, the download the framework. There's 13 chapters. I've shown you just chapter five. Um, I can give, you can, I was going to talk about chapters one and eight as well a little bit, but um, I talked about one and a little bit about, and I skimmed over the top of eight. Um, there are, there's a, there's a whole chapter on teaching uh, for equity and engagement that is a must read for everyone who's going to be uh, continuing in the master's program. Um, so um, you might as well download it, memorize it, and read it now. Um, okay, I would, will stop with that and say, um, I, I hope you all are staying safe. And um, uh, Paul, do you need any, do you need me to do anything besides that? No, just um, thank you so much for sharing uh, about the framework with us, for introducing us to some of these components. I look forward uh, to digging in a little bit more deeply and encourage everybody to follow up with the links. And thanks, Chris, for engaging us in this uh, overview and conversations. Uh, I think this is an important uh, an important moment for us to to engage as educators and to engage in thinking about how we might uh, engage our own students in these ideas. So thank you for that. And thank you to everybody for joining us today. I hope that you enjoyed your, your hour with us here and we look forward to seeing you at our next colloquium talk, which will be March 22nd. And then we've got a third and final talk for the spring, April 26th. So you will hear from us um, soon about uh, the content and presentations coming up in those. And in the meantime, stay safe and hope everyone stays well. Thanks for joining us. Good night, everybody. Thank you. See you tomorrow night, some of you.